So hello everybody. Thank you for joining us once again. This week I called it playing. We've got a bit of that. Um, hmm. we're, we're doing some of that. Grocery store is like my favorite pastime. I love going to the grocery store. I spoke to this woman who's uh, Dr. Margaret Herridge with all of those letters. She's the head of critical care in COVID times. They have an annual meeting around Christmas time of all the people that are doing this kind of actual stuff where they're helping COVID people. And she wanted me to talk about creativity. I thought I can't give them what they want. I don't know what they want, but they're saving people's lives. I can't just turn up and say something cheerful about poetry and knitting. The physicians and the medical people, they've found that finding little moments of creativity is still super important to them. What we get from that is creativity is so important to people, even in the worst and most pressured times, people still find time for it and it's important to humans, which I already thought was the case, but this seems like quite an extreme example, you know. It's like if you've made a thing and you put it out there and nobody pays attention to it, we've all had this experience. And when that happens with the one thing, what you think is, oh, nobody likes my video, right? It means my video is no good. It means I'm no good at this, I have failed. But I thought, nobody's even seen your video. That's the whole point. It doesn't tell us anything about the quality of your work. People don't dislike it. People haven't even seen it. I mean, you may or may not be rubbish, but we don't know. There's no evidence. So the problem you have is a marketing problem. A marketing problem, who knew? So you're not rubbish after all. I think it's not to do with what's in the videos. It's to do with whether you manage to announce them in the right way or people manage to see them and mention them to others or whatever. My philosophy is that everybody has their own audience. Like there's so many people in this world that like there's no way you can't find 50 people, 50,000 people that like your music, right? That like your, your art. You just got to find them. You might have to spend some money on it, but it's kind of like, like an investment, right? The theme I wrote down for this week was playing. But part of that is about how can we use everyday stuff to generate new ideas, which I'm coming on to in a bit. Since 2005, I worked with Lego, the company, on the thing called Lego Serious Play, which is a thing where adults make things, metaphors. You build things in metaphors using Lego. And I used it as a research tool for finding out people's experience of things, which it hadn't been used for before. And I did it with lots of different sorts of people, different ages, different backgrounds. If you take people through a process of getting used to just doing some stuff with Lego and recognizing the feelings that you can get in connection with the bricks, like for example, you get them to build a little thing and then uh, there's more to it than this, but the, the simple crude version is, you break one of them. And then whoever's you break, they're like, oh, and they're really sad. And it gives you the chance to point out that this was just a bunch of random plastic five minutes ago. You didn't care about it at all. But because you built it into a thing, then when I break it, it's like, oh, you know, it's really sad. There's more nerve endings in your hands than anywhere else in your body. And nerve endings means connections to your brain. So your brain is very much connected with your hands. And when you're making things with your hands, that is your brain at work. Uh, but I thought, let's do it. And we can't do it with Lego, probably. One of you's probably got some Lego around, but most of you haven't got some Lego around. But can you just find some stuff? It feels quite hard to me. I've got to see what, like what, <laughs> got a banana. But you can just use anything. I've got some sticky label, pair of scissors. This is pipe cleaners. All I have to do is put my eraser down. Oh shoot, hold on. You just put the eraser down and it slides down. I've made like some kind of ramp of some sort. Make something that represents you when you're being creative. So you might think about the feelings that you have when you're being creative, which may or may not be positive ones. What happens is just put some things together and see what happens. And then some meaning will probably suggest itself. You might have ended up with something quite weird. I've got this. It's a torch, but like a burning torch, not like what you would call a torch, David. When I'm creative, I'm on fire. So first, yeah. this is the skeleton right here. That's me chained up when I'm not being creative. And then me being creative is this Dumbledore right here, very magical standing tall so basically if you see it's like a staircase and all of a sudden there's like this big leap and then like another staircase and like another big leap and so when i start like my creative projects i almost never have an end idea in mind i just start like playing around with stuff looks really crappy on the camera basically this is a seashell and i picked it because it's like a triangle 
So the bottom part would be like collecting ideas and then you kind of narrow in at the top. And right now I've been working with a lot of like yellows and greens. So I just found some stuff that was yellow and green. Cause I'm making, I'm making a large lobster, which is going to be a hat for my thesis. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, we've all, we've all done that. Of course. That's what we were all doing last weekend. Who hasn't? Yeah. I've made a little crab. This is me. And this is me when I'm creative. <laughs> When, when you're being creative, you become bigger. Yeah, full of inspiration. That's nice. I like it. Very good. And very good support on the shellfish theme. What I mean is, of course, not how can you make this object more beautiful. I mean, it represents a creative process. And how could the creative process be better? I've done like an up and down. Like, obviously, I can't create like the most proper ramp. So I can't get like um a good like chunk of the whole masterpiece but i guess i'm supposed to like represent like the ups and downs of the creative work the point about that which you may or may not have got um is about sort of taking a, a playful attitude to everyday objects and using them to represent things which may then unlock some thoughts in you about how to do things differently and that's it